This may look like a plain, unassuming piece of parchment, but it's actually one of the most famous documents in the world. Magna Carta, meaning the Great Charter, has inspired people across the centuries, from Thomas Jefferson to Mahatma Gandhi. But why was the Charter originally created, and what does it actually say? Let us take you back to medieval England. It's the year 1215, and the ruler is King John. Many people believe that King John was one of the worst kings in history. He imprisoned his former wife, he starved his opponents to death, he allegedly murdered his own nephew, and pulled the beards of the Irish chiefs. King John had imposed heavy taxes on his barons in order to pay for his expensive foreign wars. If they refused to pay, he punished them severely or seized their property. The barons demanded that King John obey the law. When he refused, they captured London and John was forced to negotiate. The two sides met at Runnymede in June 1215. The result of the negotiations was written down by the King's clerks into the document we know as Magna Carta. Although most of the Charter's clauses dealt with medieval rights and customs, Magna Carta has become a powerful symbol of liberty around the world. It's the most famous clause, which is still part of the law today, for the first time gave all free men the right to justice and a fair trial. No man shall be arrested or imprisoned except by the judgment of their equals and by the law of the land. To no one will we sell. However, to this no clause was not as liberal as it sounds. The Charter only applied to free men. The vast majority of people in 1215 were unfree peasants who were ruled over by their landowners. And although Magna Carta was intended to create peace between King John and his rebellious barons, England was plunged into civil war after the Pope declared the Charter invalid. When King John died of dysentery in 1216, nine-year-old Henry III took to the throne. And to keep the peace, Magna Carta was reissued several times during the 13th century, until it was finally made part of English law. Magna Carta has lived on for 800 years and is echoed in the United States Declaration of Independence and the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Perhaps Magna Carta's most important legacy is that everyone, including our leaders, must obey the law. What started out as a document of specific complaints from a group of barons has turned into an international symbol of liberty, without which we might not have the rights we value so much today. Back in 1619, the American colonies were governed by the King of Great Britain and the British Parliament. All laws came to America from London. But in Virginia, there was a hint of leadership by the voice of the people. The House of Burgesses was a group of men appointed by the vote of the Virginia residents. To be considered eligible to be voted in as a Burgess in Virginia, you had to be male and own property. The House of Burgesses would meet every year and discuss how to make living and working conditions better in Virginia. George Washington, Patrick Henry, and Thomas Jefferson were some of the early members of the House of Burgesses. The House of Burgesses and the British-appointed Virginia governor could decide the taxes people had to pay. But a problem arose when the king decided to tax the colonies to pay for the French and Indian War. The House of Burgesses didn't agree, but Great Britain didn't care and made the taxes a law anyway. The House of Burgesses started encouraging the people to not pay the taxes. The British governor dissolved the House of Burgesses and said they had no authority, but the seed of independence had already been sown. The House of Burgesses still exists in Virginia today as the General Assembly.
Welcome to 60 Second Civics, the daily podcast of the Center for Civic Education. I'm Mark Gage. The Fundamental Orders of Connecticut is an important American founding document. The Connecticut colony has its origins in 1636, when Thomas Hooker led a group of dissenting Puritans from Massachusetts to the Connecticut Valley. Three years later, these settlers adopted the Fundamental Orders of Connecticut. During his sermon in 1638, Hooker made a radical statement. The foundation of authority is laid firstly in the free consent of people. The Fundamental Orders was unusual in that it derived its authority not from the king, but from the free men of the colony. The Fundamental Orders of Connecticut was, in effect, a written constitution and established the precedent for the American preference for written constitutions rather than the partially unwritten constitution of Britain. The Fundamental Orders established a legislative assembly, a governor, and a court system. The Federal Constitution, which was ratified in 1788, would later establish a system with legislative, executive, and judicial branches. That's all for today's podcast, 60 Second Civics, where civic education only takes a minute.